I'm gonna tell you this, guys. It finally happened. It fi finally freaking happened. The freaking fiend joined us. The freaking fiend has arrived. That man known as Bray Wyatt, Mr. Mr. Rogers himself, friendly, uh, what is it called? Firehouse, friendly fire, fun house, whatever the freak. Yes, it happened. It happened. And it was excellent. It was beautiful. As soon as I heard the drowning music, I was like, <gasps> I was like, it's happening. It's happening. <laughs> I couldn't find the Kurt Angle Jeff where, <laughs> where he was like, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening. I just used the old office one. <laughs> where like, oh God, it's happening, it's happening. Yeah, I used that one. But I couldn't find the Kurt Angle one because that one's funny. But that show as a whole before that even happened. I mean, it was some oh, it was some meh stuff on the show. It was not really. It was it was it was not. It wasn't that bad, but it wasn't like I'm dying to see this, and a lot of the stuff was predictable. Now the stuff that they doing with Ricochet, the battle between the the club and Ricochet is pretty decent. I like that they're interfering in people's matches. You know, they're coming out taunting him. He's retaliating. Um, I, I like that. Just keep the heat on. Keep the momentum going. It's like they know when to do that. So okay on that. Um, Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar is the Universal Champion. And he goes into another SummerSlam in a marquee match with the title against probably the same old person we didn't know but they had a top 10 10 man elimination battle royal and the one funny thing about that whole battle royal is that the top 10 is a bunch of losers except for a couple you know Seth Rollins is a winner but he lost his title so he's a halfway loser. Roman Reigns. Ro I was going to say Roman Reigns. <laughs> Roman Reigns won his match with Taker, but he had to have Legend. Um, Bobby Lashley lost. Big E's a winner, so yeah, you toss him in there. So three winners. Sami Zayn's a loser indefinitely. Uh, and how's he even top ten? He hasn't been on the show in weeks. Cesaro's a loser, but he can give you a good match. But he's a loser. So even though they're using him, cool. You know, he's gonna float he's gonna float in that main event upper mid card. So if he's gonna float in that main event upper mid card, you might as well build Cesaro up as an a dominant mid card guy. You know, you might as well let him hold and drop the title a couple times, maybe maybe make him be uh screw it. I would have him take the US and the Intercontinental at the same time and see who can who can take it from him. You know, see who can take it from him. You know, you used to do that. What happened back then? It was, um, was it, it was Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle had both the U European and the Intercontinental. And he had a triple threat. Uh, he had separate matches, but it was a triple threat. And it was whoever could beat him for one title gets that title. And then they start a match again. And I think it was him, Chris Jericho, and Chris Benoit. I think that was like in 2000, like early 2000, either late 99 or 2000, early 2000. It had to have been. I remember, I, I don't remember the pay-per-view, but I remember that match. Uh, uh, it was like a, and, and I think it had a couple stipulations in it. I don't know, but I know, I know that match happened. Um, you know, the first match could be a United States Championship match, and the second match could be an Intercontinental Championship match. And y'all just have two great matches with the same people and try and take the title off of them. You know, have them just be a dominant mid-card guy. And then once you want to use them, you know, mid -card, uh, main card, high card guy, main event pitcher guy, 
and there's nobody else. Literally, you're recycling a lot of people, WWE, when you um, when you just keep using the same three guys. You know, your Seth Rollins, your Roman Reigns, the Braun Strowmans, the 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 AJ Styles, the who else? The Kevin Owens, you know, you keep using the same guys and you use them in different variations. I, I get that, but you know, we've seen these matches have somebody break through. If you want one guy to break through, even though he can't talk, he looks goofy with the mouth guard in his mouth, but still, just have him be a dominant guy. Who else was in that match? It was Braun Strowman. Lashley, Cesaro, Big E, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, Sami Zayn, Randy Orton, who who was his return from injury. Um, I'm missing two. I'm missing two. And I'm missing two. Who cares? But it was a top 10. And I get that. You know, you want to find out who's going to fight him. That's cool and all. But you still went the predictable route with Seth Rollins winning the match. And it's like you, you basically did the lazy predictable booking where I have all the top guys in one match. And that way he beats all the top guys, which gives him super momentum to, to last up until SummerSlam. Which I don't want to see. I really don't care to see Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman. You know what I'm saying? So who cares about that? Um, Bray Wyatt. Loved his return. Loved the way they showed it. I saw somebody on Twitter saying that it was too early. Too early? It was too early to show Bray Wyatt? You know how long Bray Wyatt's been off television? He's been off television since... He's been off television since SummerSlam of last year. Like, SummerSlam last year was his last time on television. Do you guys not realize that? And they've been building this character for four months. Four months. Like, we was worried about Bray Wyatt for a minute. We was like, hold up, is Bray Wyatt, like, is he going to get released? Because I don't want him to get released. And then once he, uh, you know, they show Bray Wyatt, you know, his, his leanness, it was like, wow. And then he deleted all his stuff, and then he started doing cryptic messages, and then the, the Firefly Funhouse stuff came out and the first one people didn't know how to react to it but they liked it because it was different it was new it was a breath it was a a, a, a breath of fresh air it was different and in the, and the more that those things started coming out the more people loved it it was the best thing on Raw and now all of this culminates you know we've seen The Fiend we thought he was just going to be a Mr. Rogers character to just have the hurt and heal and have his gloves talk to him and then he does what he does. But once he revealed the fiend, it was like, yo, this thing could get real dark. Like, super dark. Like, darker than we ever seen cult leader Bray Wyatt ever been. Like, this could get dark. Mega dark. <laughs> like like sickening almost it, it can get to that point like psychopath psycho just sociopath which was one of the words of the day he should have did more words of the day you know i think they overlooked that a lot but he debuted tonight re-debuted he debuted the fiend tonight the fiend came on finn balor was celebrating his win against samoa joe and then his music just drowsed out like the power was going out and then the lights like from section to section start going out sound like a power fuse then it was like dong then it wasn't like dong but it was like dun, like a little zap sound and um you know 
people it's like what's going on what's going on what's going on what's going on then obviously the crowd erupt because they saw him going uh they saw him climbing the ring because you know he hides under the ring uh he was under there the whole show obviously or he maybe ran from the crowd but most likely you're under the ring the whole night waiting for your cue that's why there's a monitor under the ring so when guys wait for their cue they can look right there and like oh it's time roll out go in had him in the sister abigail trend uh in the position and you know they were flashing the lights lights came back on he kissed them and then bang and then he was standing there you know looking all sadistic and the fiend mask, I was like, is he going to wrestle with that on? It looks like he's going to wrestle with that fiend mask on. And that's going to be creepy. Oh, my God. That's going to be creepy. That fiend mask. Oh, man. That's going <laughs> to. Oh, man. That's going to be weird. <laughs> I want to hear his. I want to see an entrance. Because if that's just a pop in, I wonder what the entrance going to look like. So, it, and word is that next week, and I, I'm 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 terrible that I won't be able to review this live. But next week, they're gonna interview Bray Wyatt. I'll just be traveling back home. So next week, they're gonna be uh, uh, interviewing Bray Wyatt, like the Mister Rogers Bray Wyatt, and he's probably gonna act like nothing happened and apologize because. On Twitter, he was like, that darkness is gone now. Sorry about what happened. You know, he's going to be like a, like a, oh, he's going to be like a Joker. Like a Joker Bane mix. And it's going to be creepy. <laughs> oh, what if Joker and Bean, I mean, if Joker and Bane, I said Bane, Bean, what type of fan of Batman am I am? But a Joker Bane mix imagine if joker and bane had a baby <laughs> this is what it is gonna look like and that's that's great but other than that this show was bland <laughs> this is a bland show this is a bland show um not mad at it let me just get through these matches and then i'll call it a night we got ricochet and the usos versus robert rude and the revival Two out of three falls match. I'm sick of that being the first match of every show. WWE, you have to stop doing that. Ricochet wins the first fall quick as ever. Then the Revival win the second fall. And then Ricochet and the Usos win the third fall and they win. The club comes out, beats the crap out of everybody. Stands tall. Viking Raiders on the break. Jackson James and Vinny Gerber. Versus the Viking Raiders. Viking Raiders dismember them. A backstage promo with uh, Drew McIntyre talking about how he's going to disembowel and dismember Cedric Alexander for what he did. And he laughed. He said, <laughs> he said that's illegal, but I am going to humble you. And I'm going to do all this and this and this to you. And uh, Cedric Alexander said, joke's on you. Joke is going to be on you. Which it was because Cedric Alexander won. And this is my gripe with this whole thing happening. Cedric Alexander has zero momentum. Zero. Zero. Not, he actually has negative momentum. <laughs> he shouldn't even be on television after what happened before Extreme Rules with him being that janitor in the mask. Because guess what? You didn't win the match. Literally. You know what they could have done? Because, you know, they have two separate... Sorry for the loudness. They could have had two separate things. He could have won the match Monday... Pay somebody could have paid some consequence. Uh, pay some consequence Tuesday. Roman and him win the match sat Sunday, and then hey, he has momentum, so he has this match, and he wins it the way that he won it sneakingly, and then it continues because he has momentum. He has goose egg momentum because you book ass backwards WWE and it's retarded so this match shouldn't even happen that's my whole gripe then Samoa Joe versus uh, Finn Balor Finn Balor is going to be taking some time off of course The Fiend came out and that was probably the greatest moment of tonight 
outside of the 24-7 championship thing. They were going to consummate the marriage. True followed them all the way to the hotel. Uh, Mike Kanellis versus Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder wins because he's in his hometown. Then we have Lucha House Party versus the club. They beat the crap out of them, but in the middle of that, Ricochet came out and started beating up them. Uh, this fatal four way, my God, the crowd did not give. Z they gave zero Fs during this match because this match not only was long and it was an elimination match. This match was long, botchy, sloppy, nasty looking. Oh, the crowd was over this match. They chanted, This is awful. Like, this is awful. And Nikki Cross was cheering with them, thinking they were saying, This is awesome, trying to play it off like it wasn't. And it, uh, Carmilla got eliminated first, Naomi got eliminated, then Lexa Bliss got eliminated. So she will be facing Becky Lynch at SummerSlam, which is was like, why? But I forgot SummerSlam is in Toronto, so uh, Canada. And then they cut off of promos, which the crowd gave zero Fs about. They were not here for this at all. Um... Then we had Miz and Dolph Ziggler. When is Dolph Ziggler enough? This is enough. Please, Dolph Ziggler, go back to comedy. I, I, I don't even want you doing that, but just go back. Go back to comedy, dude. Nobody wants to see that. <laughs> then Drake Maverick is getting ready to consummate the marriage. You know, he has the, the robe on. His wife, his beautiful, oh, gorgeous Renee. Oh, that, that lady. Mm, that lady is, mm. Sexy eyes, nice little body. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. But um, she was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna slip into something more comfortable." Don't I think you need to do the same? While as he's drizzling rose petals on the bed, and he was like, "No mind if I do." And he pulls off his robe, and he has nothing but the title on. It looks like he's naked, but he's not naked. He just has on very, very small title whities but he's he looked like he's naked but the um, she said i ordered champagne um the guy comes in but it's the black ref that we know that looks weird <laughs> and truth is under the cart he rolls him up and cory is like he utilized the small package giggity and wins his baby back and he said i hope you guys are not constipated anymore <laughs> And then left. And then we had this, I, I have to call it awful, because it came in unpredictable. I mean, it came in predictable, excuse me. Uh, Baron Corbin, that's who I was getting. Who cares about Baron Corbin? It was Baron Cor and Rey Mysterio. That's who I was forgetting. Those two, two dudes are non-factors. Uh, Baron Corbin versus uh, Big E versus Bobby Lashley versus Braun Strowman versus Cesaro versus Randy Orton versus Rey Mysterio versus Roman Reigns versus uh, Sami Zayn versus Seth Rollins in a WWE number one contendership battle royal top 10 dude. Uh, guys got eliminated until uh, Seth Rollins and then they talked for a while and that was it. I give this show a five because of Bray Wyatt. And the 24-7 championship. And that's it. <laughs> that's all this show gets. This show gets a five. You know, it's it's dead middle with me. You know, everything else is questionable. But other than that, you got your best reactions with that and Bray Wyatt. So, tell me what you guys think. I appreciate it. This will be going up on Hill Stevens' channel as well. So, hello to you guys over here. Um... Uh, so I'm going to notify you guys as well. This is the part uh, where I tell you guys what's going to be happening with the channel in the next coming days. I am going out of town Wednesday. This Wednesday, which is the 17th, I will be traveling by car to Vegas for family reunion. Um, I won't come back until late Tuesday. Uh, you might see something Wednesday when I come back. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so I will be going Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, traveling back Monday, maybe late Tuesday, early Wednesday, we will be, I will be back and then we can just come back from there. So I'm going to tell you the same thing tomorrow 
and hopefully you'll get the message. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate it, and I'll see you guys then. Five out of ten. That's mine. What's yours? Comment. Oh,